How the high street has changed in the 40 years up to 2022. In 1982, I was very concerned about the number of old buildings disappearing in the town, so I photographed Orpington High Street to create a record. I've gone back at regular intervals ever since to photograph and in 2022 video. So what has changed between 1982 and 2022? How many of these old shops do you remember? In this video, we look at the area from the Priory Gardens entrance on the Bombay system to Carlton Parade. Do you remember these old cottages or the bike shop? What about the old timber yard and when the garage was Chevron? Make sure you stay to the end to see everything that has changed and also what has not. This part of the high street has seen the most new building during the term of the survey. Please subscribe to get updates so I release them. Brought to you by Eclectic Experience. Change seen through images. Looking down the high street, there is an entrance to the park, Priory Gardens, on the right. And then a parade of shops made up of a very mixed group of buildings. On the left, there are residential flats next to the retirement ones that replace the Allied building. This is an area with a high street that has seen the most change during the 40 years of the survey. We will look at this after the shops. We are still in the Priory Conservation Area at this point, which goes all the way down to and including number 35. First look at the entrance to the park on the right, then going back to 1982, and it has hardly changed. However, I don't remember this entrance when I was a young child, so I've consulted an old map. As an aside, look at the design of the map cover and the price, 12 and a half new pence. Unfortunately, the map does not have a published date. However, Darrow Woods Secondary School is not shown, so it must be before 1975. Right, back to the contents of the map. And sure enough, if we look along the high street, it doesn't look like there was an entrance to Priory Gardens. The first building must be one of the older ones on the high street. Looking at over the years, it certainly had a fair few occupiers. It is also locally listed. The next building along is another interesting shaped one, which has had many tenants over the years, including a photographer, a removals company, and a comic shop, to name just a couple. As we move along, this block of buildings has commercial, either side of domestic dwellings. The ones on the left have for many years been a minicab business, whilst on the right, different types of food outlets. In 2017 and 2022, the unit on the left is occupied by Oriental Spring. Moving on to the next block, seen here in 2022, before going back to 1982. In 1982, the next block of six units were all occupied. A motorcycle shop, Jennifer's, Jay Palmer, a cycle specialist, C-Mac Seafoods, Chas Norman, a camera company, and then Jones the Jewellers. I've always found the middle building fascinating, with its pointed roof with what looks like a flagpole in the middle. In 1982, there was also what like two old signboards and a support coming out from the middle of the upper floor. These are all gone by 1992, though the flagpole is still there in 2022. Here are various views over the years. As an aside, I remember my parents taking me to Jay Palmer in the late 1970s to buy a racing bike. It got a lot of use. In 1982, this section of the high street looked very different. There was a spread of cottages and businesses from just past the old Allied office block, leading up to a big brown brick building that looks very new in 1982. Looking in 2022, we can see this area has been highly developed, 
from the site of the Allied building down to the Brown building, which itself was being developed in 2022. Looking in detail at the photos, it looks like there were three stages of development. If we start next to the Allied building and look at the cottages, still very much in business in 1982. By 1992, they were boarded up and by 1997, they had just deteriorated further. By 2002, the new build is almost complete. And this is it in 2007, 12 and 17. Next along, by contrast, the buildings next to the boarded area are in good condition in 1992 and seen here in 1997. In 2002, there are more weeds growing. And if we look between the buildings, we can see the unit at the back has broken windows. By 2007, they have been replaced by new buildings. Last in this section was the new building in 1982. It hardly changed up until 2022. And now the colour has changed to grey. It looks like it's been painted. It also looks like the top floor has been extended, coming closer to the front. Incredibly, there was a working wood yard on the high street in 1982. Looking at the wood piles, it was very well stocked. It's interesting to see how a big crane was on the site, as well as a substantial chimney. Also, as an aside, if we come just outside the wood yard, notice the old style concrete bus stop and the green and glass bus shelter. The business also looks like it made use of the semi-detached houses next door. If we look at the view in 2022, it is generally a lot greener. We can in fact hardly see where the wood yard once was, but we can just about see some of the new houses that replaced it. Going back to 1992, the site is a lot emptier, with the wood yard gone and the buildings in a poor state. These buildings would all shortly be demolished and replaced by housing by 1997. Businesses have remained in the semi-detached buildings next door and we can see how they've changed over time. And this is the view in 2022. There's been a garage on this site for the whole 40 years of the survey. Quickfit has also been there for the full 40 years. Interestingly, this was the site of the Bug Hutch or Palace Cinema, which did not close until 1959. If we look at the 1982 photo at the side, it looks like the part of the old building might still have survived until then. This is the Quickfit part. However, by 1992, it looks like the building has been replaced with a newer one. Zooming in on the fuel sign in 1982, we can see that the price was quoted in two different ways. This was for gallons and litres. A gallon cost £1.72.8, whilst a litre was 38 pence. Zooming out, it was also a Chevron garage in 1982. By 1992, the garage had become Texaco, and it remained that for the rest of the survey. Gallons had also disappeared, but there are now different prices quoted for unleaded, 45.5p, 4-star, 50.2p, and diesel, 45.7p per litre. Here are a couple more pictures over the years where we can see the price of fuel changing along with the Texaco logo. Looking towards Carlton Parade, there is a building at the bottom of Perry Hall Road that had fads as a tenant in 1992. By 1997, it was the Pine Showroom. And by 2007, it looks like it is no longer used for retail. But by 2012, it is totally different. On the other side of the road is the pond, part of Priory Gardens. I'll be doing a separate video on the Priory Gardens and Old Library, so it won't cover now. Colton Parade. The parade of shops we see now was mainly constructed in the 1920s on the site of an old flour mill that made use of the water that comes up in the natural springs here 
and is also the source of the River Cray. If we look in 1982, this photo was taken from the bank on the other side of the A224. As an aside, this was probably the very last photo I took as I ran out of film, which you can tell as the end of the roll as it did not develop properly and has a red shade. If we look at the very end property, we see that it's a newer building that I think at the time was occupied by the Freeman Catalogue Company. As with most parades of shops, there's been a steady change over the 40 years. However, sitting predominantly in the middle, there has always been a fish and chip shop, though its name has changed several times. And next door, since the 1992 picture, there's been a funeral services business. Here we just run through the pictures up to 2022. Looking over the content of this section of the High Street, it has seen more new building than any other part, but it also has a view of the pond that has probably hardly changed in a hundred years. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, there is a playlist at the end covering my other High Street videos. I'll be making more similar videos on Alpington and the surrounding areas, so please subscribe to the channel, click the alerts bell and add comments, especially with any additional information. Thank you for watching Eclectic Experience, change seen through images.